but the first couple months was like brutal because I was the youngest I was the newest I couldn't speak Japanese I didn't know no one over there I wasn't even living with my uncle I was staying within the stable bro what happened when you showed up and you had all your bags packed and you haven't seen your uncle I'm guessing in a, in a little bit mm-hmm. and you see him and you, you ride with him and he just drops you off at the stable no, <laughs> no, um, no, what happened my, what? <laughs> like, my uncle actually came down to uh, grab me oh okay oh he came Man, we're here. Action. Action. Hey, I got my, my boy Fia here. Um, met him in Japan. We met in Japan, but you're from. Tell me where you're from, man. Uh, Born and raised on the west side of Oahu. Makaha. Makaha. Yep. Man. Hey, I have a question. Uh, do you guys consider people from Miley to be from Waianae? Well, me personally, I mean, once you pass the power plant, you're... On the, the West Coast. So. You're, you're on the West Coast, right? Yeah. Yeah. The Miley's from Waianae. Yeah. We're not from Nana No. No. Miley people, they go to Waianae High School. They go to Waianae High School. That's what I'm saying, bro. I told somebody that. I told somebody that. He's like a... Um, he's older, though. He's like over 50. And he was yeah, like, yeah. you from Miley? You're not from Waianae. Oh. Like, oh. I don't know about the old the, the, the older folks, but... Yeah, there was a little... You know, maybe because they had to walk. Yeah, well, so that, it felt true. far, you know. Miley felt far to walk around the the turn over there, you know. That they go to uh, catch the wave. Over there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Bro, what was it like for you growing up, man? Uh, life for me, you know. How do I put this? It was rugged, but it wasn't to the point where, you know, I don't have that story where my dad wasn't around or. My mom wasn't around, you know. So I don't, I don't have that yeah. rugged background. Uh, was Thank it rugged? God. Was it rugged? No. Let's go. Was it blessed? Yes. Yeah. But my mom and dad was around, you know, family. We were tight. But that ass whooping, <laughs> that was a rug. That, that was, was real? That was real? That was real. That was real. <laughs> you got, my yeah. dad made sure that he was, you know, he was there. Yeah. But life on the the west side, it was simple country life. Yeah, you know, nothing too, nothing too crazy. Not like how it is today, though. Bro, what? It's nuts right now, bro. It is. Yeah, we was talking about that before earlier. Like, man, it's crazy right now. Not not what I remember. I don't, I don't remember it being that crazy out there. Me neither, bro. Yeah, me neither. Like right now, there's just too much craziness is going around. Why not right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like it's. You know it's crazy because it's why not is on the news like every almost every day. Yeah. For something. Yeah, for something big too. If it ain't chicken fights, it's shootings. Yeah. If it ain't shootings, it's car robberies. If it ain't robberies, it's someone getting dealt with something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's just right now it's too crazy. But yeah. back to when I was growing up, it was a good life. Yeah. And then um we met we met in Japan. So we yes, met we when did. you were already in Japan, bro. So you were you were um wrestling and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, how'd you how'd you end up in Japan? <clears throat> Funny story. Um so I was in high school and at that time I didn't know what I was gonna do. I didn't know if I wanted to go to college, didn't know if I wanted to work or something. And then uh Next thing you know, one day I was just sitting in the living room, and my dad calls me to the room. And then I go to the room. He was like, close the door. So growing up as as a Samoan in a Samoan household, when your parents tell you to get in the room and close the door, you already know. Like, we already know what what, what plays out after that. And it, it played out. Like, he told me to get in the room, lock the door, sit on the ground, legs folded. I'm like... Dude, what the hell did I do now? <laughs> you a senior. Yeah, I was a senior in <laughs> high school, bro. Senior in high school. And I'm sitting there on the ground, and he was like, oh, you're getting recruited. So I'm like, recruited? So I asked him, oh, what what college is, is calling? And he was like, no, it's not college. So I'm like, okay. Military? He was like, no. I'm like... 
am I going to keep asking? And then he just comes out and he throws me, oh, sumo. And at that time, the only person that was in sumo that I knew was my uncle, my mom's brother. And I'm like, whoa, wow, dang. Like, I have to, you know, sit back a little bit. And I'm like, mm. at first I was real skeptical about going. Like, my uncle called that, 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 that moment. He was on speaker. He was like, oh, do you want to go? And I was like, uh, I don't know. Right then and there, but my mom hung up the phone, yelled at me. Like, what are you doing? This is a great opportunity for you. Pack your bags and you're going. Oh, you're going. So like, I did not, like, at that point, I didn't have no choice, bro. Yeah. I don't okay. So that's how I ended up in Japan. It was my mom's brother was a former sumo wrestler himself. A legend. One of the legends, you know. And he called me. I gave the I, I gave the yes. I'm coming. And then um, it was two weeks after graduation. So my graduation hit. And then I had my graduation party. The Tuesday after that, I, I, I just found myself in a whole nother world, bro. Hey. Just like in a world that I never thought I, I would be living in. Yeah. So you never visited your uncle like any time when he was wrestling or anything like that? I mean, we did. You guys did? Okay. Like, um, we would take family trips sometimes. I uh, go to Tokyo Disneyland. And uh, believe it or not, I have my first birthday in Japan. For real? I oh. didn't know this. I didn't know this until um, my uncle's manager told me. He was like, oh, yeah, uh, we did your uh, first birthday up here. I'm like, where's the pictures? Yeah, no, yeah. I want to see. But, yeah, that's so, I guess I already had that connection with Japan. Yeah, yeah. From, from, from uh, when I was little. And then, uh, yeah, that's how I found myself. I got recruited from my mom's brother. No, yeah. and who's your mom's brother? Uh, I'm named after him. Yeah, Fiamalu Penitani, aka Musashi Maru. Yeah, man. So that's the that's the big guy. Yeah, bro. It was it's so crazy, bro. Because my mom, you know, when we went to Japan, I took mm-hmm. a I took a church team. You know, we just went and. It was actually just a small stop we were making on our way to Vietnam mm-hmm. um, for tourism in Vietnam. We were just being tourists. We weren't doing anything else. <laughs> Cra- we were, yeah, were just checking out the scene. So our church, you know, we're just going on <laughs> tourism to Vietnam. Um, we stopped off in Japan. My mom said, like, you got to you gotta hit up, because um, I guess they went to school together. She went to school yeah, with yeah, your yeah. uncle. She was like, and I was like, oh, okay, mom. And I, I was like, no, I don't want to do that. You know, you just feel, you know, like you don't want to bother nobody. You don't want to barge in. Yeah, you don't want to like barge that. in. And so, um, but my mom, I guess your uncle messaged me on Facebook because my mom had already messaged him and mm-hmm. he was like telling me to come. So I was like, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll come. Bro, it's nuts. And he said he was sending, he's sending uh, somebody to come get us, bro. And we walked out. I was like, bro, I saw you. And I was like, oh, snap. And that someone was. Was you. Me. Yeah. <laughs> was you and somebody else, though? It was one of the other wrestlers. Yeah, one of the other wrestlers. Yeah. But what was, crazy, what was crazy to me was, bro, when we were walking in the street on the way to um, the stable, oh, bro, everybody was just like eyes wide watching you guys walk, bro. Oh, mainly because, of, you know, some big local. <laughs> <guy walking around. laughs> and, uh, bro, what is it like, what is it like um, doing it over there? Like, how was the adjustment for you? Adjustment was a big cultural shock for me, you know, coming from a Polynesian upbringing. Going to Japan, it was just blank. It's like it's like being born all over again because you got to learn how to talk in their language. Mm. You got to learn their customs. You have to learn how they function. So... Uh, my first couple of years was a little rough. Not first couple of years, the first couple of months was a little rough because I didn't start when I first went. I had to sit out a whole year. Oh, for real? Yeah, just train because I had to wait for my visa. So the first year I trained, but the first couple of months was like brutal because I was the youngest, I was the newest, I couldn't speak Japanese. I didn't know no one over there. I wasn't even living with my uncle. I was staying within the stable. 
that oh. I had to train with. Dang. So they just threw you in the fire right away. Threw me to the wolves, bro. And I had to learn things. Basically, I wouldn't say how he learned it because he learned it a little bit more crazier than me, but a little bit crazy. Because mm-hmm. I had to go through a lot of trials and tribulations. But... Japan, all in all, like it was an awesome experience, man. Yeah, bro. What happened when you showed up and you had all your bags packed and you haven't seen your uncle? I'm guessing in a, in a little bit. Mm-hmm. And you see him and you, you ride with him and he just drops you off at the stable. No, um, <laughs> no what happened? My, <laughs> what? <laughs> my uncle actually came down to uh, grab me. Oh, okay. Oh, he came to grab. Okay. So he came down to grab me, <clears throat> and then we flew up together. So he explained what was going to happen to you. He didn't no. just drop you off at the stable? He didn't explain. Oh, he didn't explain? He didn't explain. He gra- he came down to grab me. I flew up with him and his wife. And then the first night we stayed at his house. And the second day, he just told me, hey, you're going. I'm like, wait, where? Oh, you're going to the stable. You're going to stay over there. And he just, you know, hey, take this guy. <laughs> well, I, was, I was tripping out, bro. Like, oh, so it's like that? But Dang, that's crazy. It was crazy, yeah. It was interesting. Yeah. As I would say. Man, and so the whole time you were up there, you lived in the stable. Yeah. Yeah. Lived in a stable. And um, then people might not know this, but the reason the co- learning the culture is way bigger is because sumo is very cultural. Yeah? It's a very much a big part of Japanese is, culture, formal and everything, yeah, right? It is a very, it is a very big part of Japanese culture. Mm-hmm. I mean, mainly because the sport is, the sport itself is like over 2,000 years old. And that's the only sport in Japan that still follows the old traditions from the kimonos that we that we used to the way that my hair was to the way that we would present ourselves in the public. Like that was old fashioned Japanese. Mm-hmm. And that's another thing that I had to get used to because, you know, I wasn't used to walking around in a kimono. I wasn't used to walking around with my hair up in a knot. So the culture wise, that's a big part. Mm-hmm. It's a big part of Japanese culture. Yeah. That's all I was thinking. Um <clears throat> that's probably like a lot more pressure. But the other thing, there's a we there's a there's a rule, right, that they have in each stable that you can only have one foreigner, right? Yeah. And so you were the one foreigner. Like, was, was that uh, a lot of pressure or uh it was for multiple reasons. Well, for, for my case. One, I was the only foreigner. Two, I was from Hawaii. And Hawaii wrestlers already had, you know, a good reputation. And three, I was a nephew of probably one of the greatest wrestlers that has ever, you know, participated in the sport. So there was there's a lot of pressure coming on me. But, you know, I dealt with it in my own way. But the foreigner thing, yeah, it was it was pressure, mainly because you I had to prove myself so that you know I would be accepted in a way. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. And then you had they they gave you the name right, similar to your uncle's, right? So yeah, my name. <clears throat> so my my uncle's name is Musashi Maru. Mm-hmm. I took the Musashi, but I just had Kuni. So my name was Musashi Kuni. Yeah. So, and then my nickname from when I was little, Mamu. Oh, that's your nickname. That's my nickname. That's my, so I don't know how that nickname came about, but ever since I was little, I was just, I just was called Mamu. So my, my wrestling name was Musashi Kuni, Mamu. So my nickname just stuck with me when I went to Japan. Dang, that's broke. crazy, bro. Yeah, it was cool. Man, what was the, what was the hardest part about all of that, man? The hardest part was just, you know, overcoming, you know, just conquering the challenges, you know, um, like I said, the trials and tribulations that not just sumo, but just being in a con- in a different country. So the challenge was just not to lose to myself. You know, I, there's days where I woke up and I was like, man. Do I really want to keep doing this? Or do I really want to go downstairs and keep on practicing? And then uh, 
if there's one thing that helped me get through what I went through, it was my dad. My dad would always teach me and my brothers, you know, no matter what, don't let anybody tell you, you know, what you can or cannot do. No matter what, you always got to find a way to to overcome what you're what you're going through. Always always swing for the fences. So if you ask me, that was that was one of my biggest challenges was just to not not give up basically. Yeah. Yeah. Cuz it's a it's a grind of a schedule, yeah. You guys <clears throat> I was watching a BBC interview um, shoot, years ago. Yeah, yeah. You were you were young though. I was real young. He was bro. real young, bro. I, think I was like eighteen or nineteen. Yeah, bro. Why, yeah, you were you were nineteen, I think. I and was, they yeah. did the BBC interview, and bro, your schedule was nuts, yeah. Bro, wake up in the morning, like six thirty. We start practice. We don't finish practice till like eleven. We don't eat. We don't even eat in the morning, bro. There's no breakfast. So we wake up, put on our belts, and we just practice. And then from practice, we finally get to eat at like 12.30. And then from 12.30, we take like an hour or two rest. Three o'clock, we're back up. We're cleaning the house. We're cleaning, bro. Like something like a lot of kids nowadays wouldn't even (laughs) believe. Yeah, cleaning. Cleaning. (laughs) Like... And when I say cleaning, I'm not like talking about wiping down our our, our uh, PS5 or no, nah, bro. We're mopping floors, we're cleaning windows, you know, stuff like that. And then after that, uh, we got weight training, and then our dinner, and we have a curfew. Our curfew was always ten thirty, and then um, you break that curfew, bro. You're dust, for real. You're dust. Hey. The next day in practice, you're dust. <laughs> so. I know because I broke curfew once. Oh, for real? You I did? was dust, bro. Oh, bro. Why'd you break curfew? I, I, I went out with uh, one of the other wrestlers from the house, and we lost track of time. We were just hanging out, eating. And then I, I, we had a few too, but we came back. Or well, not came back. We uh, I checked my phone. I looked. It was already 11. Oh, bro. I went home. My uncle was waiting. I'm like, and he was, he was just like, get upstairs. See you tomorrow in practice. I'm like, okay, okay. I couldn't even sleep that night. For real? I'm like, what is going to happen? <laughs> is this going to be the end of me? <laughs> My time has come. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The beginning of the, the end. The beginning of the end. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, bro, they got, they got work. It's crazy, though, because... You guys practice in that little room that we that we visited? Yeah. So that, that all that's you guys are just in there. Yeah. Man. So when I was there, the max guys that we had was about twenty five. Yeah. So imagine twenty five guys in that little area. You know, that's a lot of that's a lot of tension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you basically you're like you basically breathing everybody's breath already because yeah. it's so it's a, so comp it's compact. Yeah. So yeah, that's our that's our practice area. Man. Oh. You guys are living with them. Man, that's nuts. Yep. That's nuts. And then uh we all lived in the same place. So the first floor was our practice area, second floor was our living area, and then the third floor is where my uncle and his wife would live. Mm. So it was one building. Oh, for real? So oh so they, they lived above. Yeah, the oh, the floor yeah, so above. you couldn't, you couldn't, yeah, you couldn't get away with nah, that. Nah, that. Negative, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And on top of that, he had cameras. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like to the point where if he doesn't come downstairs for practice, he has a camera in the corner on the ceiling. Nice. <laughs> so Just he's watching, watching from us. Like it's like he's watching TV. Yeah. Like, watching our practice. And did he start that stable? He started it. Okay. He started well, the name of the stable came from his old stable that That's he what used I, to yeah. wrestle for. Right. So his boss. Gave him that name. What was it called? Musashigawa. Yeah, Musashigawa. Yeah. So that yeah. was his stable when he was wrestling. But ever since his boss retired, the stable's name retired up until he started it. Mm. So he brought it back up. Yeah. And then um, what city was that in? That was in Tokyo. Tokyo, yeah. 
Uh, I don't know if people know about the sky tree. It was not too far from the sky tree. Okay. There's this new big tall. I think it's the tallest building in the world. Yeah. It was right down the road. So. Wow. Ah. Well, so what was your like? What was it like your first match, bro? So my first match. Nerve wracking. It was just nerves, nerves all over my body. Like coming up on that ring, just looking across. It's just like I'm looking at you, looking at you, bro. I'm like, if I lose, <laughs> like I'm going to get it. And I you've come. been training for a year. I've been training for a year. Even even more so. Like I've been training for a whole year. Like brutal training with my uncle. And I get up on that ring and I'm looking at you and I'm the only thing that... I'm getting uncomfortable looking at you right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. No, I'm retired, bro. I'm, <laughs> I'm good, bro. You're good. You're good. So I'm on that ring. I'm looking at a guy. The only thing that was going through my head is what, was, what what's going to happen to me if I lose when I go back to my uncle? Because that's how strict he was on me. Like, if I lost, like, would he send me back home? If I lost, would I get a beat down? Like, those are those are the things I was running through my head. Because when I got on that ring my first match... There's a lot of people watching. There's a lot of cameras. Like, oh, look, there's Musashi Maru's nephew making his debut. If I made a fool of myself, that would be the end of it. But, you know, thankful to the man upstairs, I came on with the win and I, you know, I did my thing. Um, but my first tournament, it didn't go so good. Because... Uh, what do you call it? I had a cut on my foot prior to the tournament, and it got infected. Oh, for real? So midway tournament, I started, you know, losing, losing, and I was getting yelled at. So after the tournament, like it got infected to the point where I started to break out, and like, you know, fever and stuff like that. Like, and then my uncle was like, "Oh, how come you never tell me you got in, your foot was infected?" I'm like, uh, maybe because it's my first tournament, you know, I don't want to look like a, like a, like a, a soft guy. Yeah. But yeah, that, that, that first tournament was not so good. Dang. But it's all good. Yeah. How long until you knocked that guy out? Oh. <laughs> bro, that was the craziest. <clears throat> the knockout. Bro, the knockout. I don't bro, that thing is crazy. The knockout. A one. One hit or quitter, yeah, bro. One, the walk away KO. <laughs> yeah, bro. You know, I talked to uh, Mark Hunt before I started. <laughs> no, no, I was joking. That looked like Mark Hunt. That looked <laughs> like what he did. It's like uh, that match was in 2018. So, um, oh, that was not too long before you came back. Yeah, that was not too long. Wow. So in sumo, you line up right. And it's like your hands once both hands touch, you're you're on right. <clears throat> so is that, is that what it is? Am I wrong about that? The uh, the both hands things. Yeah, that's the amateur sumo. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh, <sighs> so my bad. Um. Amateur oh, sumo. because there's no there's no referee. There, there's a referee, but oh, okay. I'm not too sure about the amateur sumo. Okay, okay. But you gotta have both hands. Professional sumo. It's just timing. It sounds weird, yeah? Yeah. Like, how, how are you going to time? Yeah, how are you going to time? But if you think about it, well, when I was in it, it's just you get one hand down, and then the other guy gets one hand down. And then we just, I don't know, it just happens. Damn. It just happens. So what happened with, what happened, what, what, what happened with you and that guy, bro? Poor guy, you ended his career, yo. How is he going to recover from that? I don't know if he's still recovering. <laughs> if he's still recovering. It was like but, uh, the knockout. Back to the knockout video. Uh, prior to that match, I was in the locker room getting ready, doing my taping, uh, stretching, you know, um, just getting ready. And then, mind you, there's two locker rooms that we have. One for the west side. And one for the east side. I was, I believe I was on the west side. Mm. 
So he comes in the locker room that I'm in. <laughs> I'm looking at him like, are you okay? Like, what do I think like, what is he doing here? And he comes up to me. And he talks to me. I've never, how do you say, uh, I never told my uncle this. I never told any of my family this. But that guy, there's a reason why I chose to do that in that ring. He came up to me in the locker room and he tells me, oh, you think you can beat me? You're from Hawaii. You don't belong here. That's what he said? Like, like excuse my language, but he was talking shit to me in the locker room pre-match. And I'm like, uh, okay, I'll try. I'll try to beat you. So I was already livid, bro. Yeah. Like, my mind was set on hurting this guy. Like, it didn't just happen. Like, I, I wanted to beat him so bad because of what he said. And being from Hawaii, when you're in Hawaii... Yeah, you got your rivalry with this school, that school, that guy, this guy. When you're out of Hawaii, it's Hawaii versus everybody. Yeah, versus the world. Versus the world, bro. Doesn't matter what country. It's it's we coming. You know what I mean? And for him to say that, I was like, okay, I was gonna slap in the face. I got you. I got you. And that's disrespectful too <coughs> for him to come in. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mean kind. Yeah. Like to the point where he came into the locker room where he wasn't even supposed to be in. Mm-hmm coming up to his opponent and taunting him in a way you know yeah I didn't know I don't know if you know he was talking to a Samoan <laughs> Tongan guy that, you know <laughs> yeah, but yeah. anyways back to the story we get outside I'm sitting at the bottom of the ring and I'm just eyes locked on him bro and then we get up in on the ring I didn't realize how short he was Cause when he came to me in the locker room, I was like laying down, stretching, taping. So when he came up on the ring, I was like, "Hey, this guy is short. How the the game plan changed? Like how we can get this guy?" The first thing that came in my mind was the forearm rip. <laughs> so I'm like, hmm, "Small guy." Let's see if I can stand him up real fast and just, just work on him. Just aim for his, you know, his face and just get, get him off of me. Little did I know I was going to get that knockout. I didn't know. So, boom. We get our hands down. And then we go. My forearm caught the back of his jaw. And then I come in for a second hit. And I hit air. So I'm like, dang, I missed him. But I looked to my side and he's laying down. So I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, he just walked out. I just walked back to my side. <laughs> Bro, what did the crowd go? Oh. The crowd was <laughs> oh at first. But when I was walking back, I, I was getting booed from a couple of people. For real? Yeah. I was getting booed from Japanese people. They were yelling out, you can't do that, this and that, blah, blah, blah. Go back to where you came from, blah, oh, blah, blah. Oh, for real? So that's, that, that, that's where... Overcoming trials and tribulations yeah. stuff like that comes in when I get booed for just winning a match. Yeah. And it wasn't like illegal. What I did was legal, but they didn't like it. But I Wow, so it wasn't it wasn't like all love when you went even though your uncle's a legend, it wasn't all love when you got to Japan? No. Wow. I had to from your stable from the the your 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 team in the stable was they was accepting right they were cool they were accepting they but were accepting. outside it was like there were the few that was outside wow for real yeah so I guess uh, I guess you can say when the saying goes if you got people hating on you then you must be doing something right yeah and I just want to match. But they didn't like it because it wasn't, I wasn't from Japan. Yeah. Wow. But I think it's crazy because in that video, like I said, the inter- the interview, your uncle was being interviewed. He did mention that Japan at that point, that was 2012, I think, 2013, mm. 14, that video dropped. But they said, uh, he said at that point, 
12 years. It had been 12 years since Japan had a, a grand champion anywhere. Yeah. So maybe um, there's a little bit of animosity because they can't, even, they weren't winning in their sport. Even to this day, bro, there's no Japanese grand champion. Wow. It's a Mongolian. So the Mongolians and the, and the Europeans, they've been, uh, they've been up there. Yeah. Is it because their size? It's... It's mainly because the Japanese wrestlers, they're not as hungry as they used to be. Because mm. nowadays, they have everything. They got the technology. They got the money. All right, because so in sumo, one of the things that the athletes, the wrestlers have to do is they have to get sponsors, right? That's yep. how you make money. Yeah. So the Japanese, they actually come in with a lot more support, a lot they more. And they come with the, their hometown, support them. Yeah. The hometown supporters. Did anybody crazy. from Wyda support you? Uh, my family. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll take it, bro. Yeah, bro. I'll take family. it. I got, hey, I got you and your family. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll we take we it got this. you, bro. I'll take we got, this. We donated some chocolates. Hawaii versus everybody. Hawaii bro. versus everybody, I baby. I got you. But where was Hawaii at? <laughs> <laughs> no. Nah, um, there's a. Not a lot of people knew that I was up there. Mm. I think only a lot of my closest friends, yeah. my family, my church members, they knew I was up there. But uh, not a lot of people knew. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know you were up there. Like, my mom only told me that you, your uncle was up there. But when I met you, I was like, dang, there's another poly out here, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, You were the first poly I seen in Japan, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Man. The first Hawaii, uh, Hawaii born wrestler since... Since my uncle then. Yeah, that's crazy. That was yeah. back in the 1990s. Yeah. So, like you said, the hometown supports the Japanese wrestlers. Mm -hmm. They support, bro. Like, if you would compare it to us, it's like a football player from Kahuku. That's how big the support is. Mm. And a lot of the times, the Japanese wrestlers, they don't have that, that, that hunger in them. Mm. As opposed to wrestlers coming from outside yeah, they don't have it. anything yeah, yeah. they're in that country by themselves so they gotta fend for their own and that's how a lot of them get you know to where they're at you know yeah. me personally I had to cut my career short you know I got sick I got injured my ankle like to the point where my body was deteriorating like mean kind bro my body mass was just going down I lost hair. For real? I was going bald, like to the point where you couldn't see no hair follicles anymore. Like literally. What was it what was it that caused that? And to be honest, I don't even know myself. But and no one knows this. Only my brothers and my parents. Like if you see me before I came down you wouldn't recognize that that was me because, like I said, I lost hair. I was, my body didn't look the same. So something was wrong. And leading up to my retirement, you know, I sat down with my uncle and I talked it, I talked it out with him. And he was like, you know, maybe it's time to, to, um, to think about hanging up the belt. So, yeah. How was that conversation for you, bro? It was hard. But, uh, you know, being raised the way we was raised by my dad, everything just leads back to him and my mom. You know, it was, it, yeah, I was, you know, bummed. And I was tripping out that I had to retire. But it wasn't more so of, oh, now what I got to do? Now look, I got to go home all shame. It wasn't it wasn't a lot of that. It was more so of hey, maybe the man upstairs has a different path for me. Maybe he's seen that this path isn't going as well as, you know, it's supposed to. Maybe he has another plan for me in life. So that's where my mentality was at. Hmm. You know, always always remembering that the man upstairs always has a plan. And he always has a door waiting to be open. So, but the conversation itself is pretty heartbreaking. But, you know, 
Take it as you go. Yeah. Did your uncle know that you were feeling <clears throat> you were feeling sick or that? that oh, yeah. He's seen it. Seen it. He's seen it. He's seen me go through everything that I went through. Like there was one time I was in the hospital. Like, and again, no one knows this. I don't like I don't even think I talked it over with my parents. I was in the hospital for about three weeks to almost a month. Just trying to get myself back up to par health wise. I was laid up in a bed and all I could think about was, bruh, when the hell am I gonna get up? You know what I mean? But laying up in that hospital it really made me think about a lot of things that I wanna do. And going back to the conversation that I had with my uncle about retiring, he told me he was like, It's time to, you know, think about the long run. Think about your health in the future. You know, life's not over and stuff like that. But it was hard. Hmm. And uh it was hard coming home, but life goes on. Yeah. Yeah, I like that I like that you said that, man. Like your um with anything difficult that we do, anything hard, you know, stuff like that, God is what do you call sovereign, right? He's in oh, control, yeah. man. He he knows the end from the beginning, and if you're you know if you're a follower of God, what do he say? He says that you know he works all things out for the good of those who love Amen. him and are called according to his purpose, right? Yep. So I think that's a good the good thing because man, if we uh, if it all rested on us, if it was all dependent on us and Bro, we just got to figure it out on our own. That would yeah. be terrible. That would a be terrible a, way to live in the world, man. That would be pretty dramatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On our end. Yeah, yeah. That would be terrible. But, bro, so, so you – praise God for your parents, man. That, oh, yeah. That they didn't – because I, I know people – I was talking to somebody about this, too. I know people that play sports, bro, mm-hmm. and when it doesn't work out for them, you know, and it's rare that sports is going to work out. Yeah, you know, it takes a lot of like, your body needs to be right. You need to get the right opportunities, be mm-hmm. in the right spot. But I've I've known people that when they don't make it, you know, they go they either they go to college, they don't make it to the pros, which is a small you know small percentage mm-hmm. of people actually make it to the pros. And bro, like their their family is disappointed, and they're mm-hmm. they're you know everybody is like disappointed in them, you know. Wow, mm-hmm. look at him, shame, right? You never even make them like, and they feel that pressure, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But to have parents that were supportive. That knew, hey man, like this ain't the end, you know. Yeah, and the yeah. uncle who's like looking out for long term, because I know people that they don't, they had no shot at the pros, and they don't make it to the pros, and they're all depressed. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Like they're all sad because yeah, yeah. That, that's their dream, you know. And I talk to a lot of athletes that feel that way. Like, oh, man, you've been working for something for so many years, and you don't get it, man. It's just a lot of disappointment there, you know. Yeah. And you were doing sumo for seven years. Yep. Yeah. You know what I mean? Trying to crown, put in all that grind in, and then man, God's called you to pivot, but you know He has something better for you. That's and hats off to your parents, man, for being like that. Yep. So everything, you know, everything I just owe to my mom and dad, and the way they raised not just me but my two younger brothers. That's why you know in the beginning I I mentioned I don't have that story where my parents was absent, you know. Um, I have that story where my parents was there, but at the same time, they made it known that they was there. And that's a goal of mine, you know. When I have my own kids, I want to make sure that I'm just like my dad, Mm. to be there for my kids, to, to show them what is right and what is wrong. And to show them ultimately to keep that relationship with the man upstairs because you never know what's going to happen in life. But no matter what happens, man upstairs got you. Mm-hmm. So everything that has happened up until this very moment, my parents has had a big impact on it. Yeah. So, man, that's awesome, man. And I want to get into that, but what was the... Uh, so- Right after you had that conversation with your uncle, how long was it until you were officially retired and had the ceremony? Oh, uh, what a year! Wow, so that was a long time to process. That was a long time to process, bro. A year, so I had to um, not just process, but get everything ready for the retirement. 
because the retirement was it was a big deal for me, for our stable, for my supporters, and stuff like that. So leading up to the retirement, man, it was just draining. Like, sometimes I'll just be like, can I just uh, catch a flight and go home? <laughs> and I'll go to them, no, 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 no. No, no. You will be, if you're going to retire, you're going to do it the right way. So, yeah, it was just a whole, it was a long process leading up to it. Mm. And the retirement itself, it was, it was emotional, but it was also, it was pretty cool the way that they carried out the retirement. I had to cut my hair. A lot of my supporters and a lot of the sponsors I was at the stable took turns cutting my hair. And I was like, damn, I'm really retiring. Like, this is really happening. The first time that first person put that first cut in my hair, reality hit. And like, that's when I started getting all emotional. Yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> Did you, um, you look back now. Did you do you miss the do you miss the time in there? I get that question asked to me a lot. Like like everyone everyone knew that I come across. They always ask that question. It's a yes and a no answer. It's the yes part is I miss it because of the experience that I've had that I've been through. I will never get another experience like that ever again in, in this life. And it's an experience not a lot of people get to get to go through. You know, um, not just a professional sport, but just being in that environment. That's not an experience that I'll ever go through. So that's the, that's the yes part. The no part is I, I, I did what I could. There's nothing that... I can take away from what I did. There's nothing that I can I can do about it because I gave basically I I gave what I gave in the ring, and it didn't turn out in my favor. But it's all good because I gave it all I had. So that's the no part. So yeah, that's that's basically the answer that I have. That's 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 what it is when it comes to that question. Yeah, you have no regrets. No. Yeah. No regret whatsoever. Yeah. If I did regret, then that means I didn't give my all. Yeah. So Man. Yeah. I thought you was gonna say beef katsu. No. <laughs> Dude, you but, introduced um, me to beef katsu, um, bro. You remember that? Do you remember that? Did I? You the one told me about it. Oh bro, you right like you said, bro. When you leave here, go get beef katsu, and you're like, just anywhere, just it, find it. That shop, I think it was that shop right that down one shop, the house. bro. You told me about that. Uh, I've been telling people about beef katsu since forever now, bro. People are sleeping eat, on uh, beef katsu, bro. They sleeping on beef katsu. They think bro. chicken katsu is good? Nah, no. Nah. I could eat chicken katsu no more, bro. No. Beef katsu. <laughs> I'm done with chicken katsu, bro. LNL, get out of here. I'm just kidding. I still eat chicken katsu. LNL, we love you. We love you, LNL. <laughs> No, nah, but man, that yeah, that's that's heavy, bro. I just man. But dude, I do I do uh one thing that you can do, bro, is you can always like you said, you can't ever get that same experience you had being in the stable, mm -hmm. being immersed in a culture like that like you were, mm -hmm. right? You you have to when you're doing what you were doing. Mm -hmm. But you can always visit Japan. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. And bro, things in Japan is just legit, bro. Bro, like they do everything well. Unlike over here, yeah. you walk around and, okay, so everyone that's listening to this podcast and everyone that's about to watch Christian's podcast, believe me when I say this, you walk around in Japan, you're not going to find a piece of gum on the floor. You're you might, not. You might find one in my house. <laughs> you might find one in my house. Too, <laughs> but you bro. won't find one in Japan, bro. Like, Japan is just on a different level on all, multiple things, bro. The air is clean. The street walk, the, the the sidewalks on the street is clean. They have koi fish in their little... In, they have fish living. Bro, they got fish like... In the drains, bro. I wouldn't be surprised that you see people walking around with fish in their wallets. Man. Bro, you know another thing that's crazy? Japan. I was walking uh, Toyuso Fish Market. Mm -hmm. I was walking over there. 
And um, I just come from like another country where, you know, things aren't as clean. Mm-hmm. And I was walking with this girl that, that was with us. And I was like, at the fish market. And I was like, hey, this open air fish market over here. I said, like, hey, uh, where are the flies at? Oh, this, this girl looks at me and she goes, why would there be flies at a fish market? <laughs> I'm like, right, you ain't never been to the places I've been to because <laughs> there's flies everywhere. <laughs> and she was just confused. Like, there's fish here. With Why would there be flies? What are you talking Lady. about? Lady, you want to take a trip down to Makaha real fast? <laughs> yeah, bro. These flies is huge out I'll here. Take you, I'll take you to Tamara's. <laughs> Sorry, Tamara's. I love you too. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. Bro, it's clean. It's clean, bro. And quiet. Oh, don't don't get me started on the quietness. Quiet. Oh, maybe not where you was, but no, where no, I no, was, no, it was no. quiet. No, no, no. It was quiet. It is, right? Okay. Like, coming back home to Makaha, and you hear your neighbors just throwing blows. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> where's the peace and quiet? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Bro, it's quiet. It, uh, it is, bro. Bro, you can tell a foreigner on the train because they loud. Facts. Yeah, that, but that was me. <laughs> I didn't notice I didn't notice until like the second time around in Japan. But I was like, oh snap, I was so loud the first time. Like everyone's in the in the train just, you know, looking straight. Yeah. Or not bothering outside. nobody. Not bothering nobody. Bro, I bro, I there was a guy one time on a train, dude. He was like this. Knocked out, bro. Just knocked out like I was like snoring. <sighs> bro, the train stops and he wakes up, stands up, and walks out. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? <laughs> Like, hey, Superpowers, bro. Like they know. Already. They know, bro. He's second like, nature. yeah, second nature, second bro. Nature, I gotta bro. wake up right now. Like, His body's like, wake up now. No, he must have been in his head, like counting the stops. Well, bro. Okay, another thing before we before we transition off of Japan, but mainland Seven Eleven versus Hawaii Seven Eleven. Mainland Seven Eleven sucks. <clears throat> mainland Seven Eleven sucks. Hawaii Seven Eleven is way better than mainland. Japan 7-Eleven, though, will roll us up, wrap us up, and kick our little musubis out the door. The main last, the Jap- Japanese 7-Eleven, bro, is a five-star dining experience. Bro. 100%, bro. 100% agree with you. So, like I said, if anyone, for everyone that's listening to Christian's podcast... Take a trip to Japan, forget the restaurants, forget everything else. The first stop you make, 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven, bro. 7-Eleven. Your life will be changed, I'm telling you. Bro, cheap, bomb. Cheap, fresh, clean, flavorful. If you ask me, I could live off of 7-Eleven. I can live off. That's what I said. I told my mom. I was like, mom, you can live off of 7-Eleven in Japan. Bro, talk about like... The best convenience store on this planet. On the planet. I don't think Japan has a bad 7-Eleven anywhere. I never had a bad 7-Eleven. Let me tell you this about my 7-Eleven experience. The 7-Eleven by your guy's place. I went into that thing. I was I ate my beef katsu. <laughs> so my tummy was feeling kind of weird. So I was like, yeah. I got to use bath. I got I to gotta use bathroom. But I'm in a public. I don't want to use public bathroom. Because I know what public bathroom is. It sucks. Bro. I asked the lady, I was like, do you guys have, do you guys have a bathroom? <laughs> she was like, yeah. So she showed me. I walk in there, bro. It's cleaner than my house. <laughs> bro, I do, my, I do what I got to do. It rhymes with a number two. I get out. Bro, she comes right in right after me, bro. And she's cleaning it for the next person. And I was like, this is the best <laughs> experience I ever had <laughs> Public bathroom, dog. Ladies out there. <laughs> I was just like, bro, I was like, this is unreal. Up. After that, I was like, I got to move to Japan. Ladies out there. No. Clean the bathroom. Right <laughs> Clean the bathroom. That's how I use the bathroom. Bro, but it was like that 7-Eleven. Once I discovered 7-Eleven, bro, it was over. No, but the, that, that's the thing. What you just said. The 7-Eleven has a bathroom in it. Yeah. I that's mean, true. The 7-Eleven's down here. Don't put a bathroom in No, it. you try to go use the bathroom, and they're going to come inside and just kick you out of the store. Yeah, it's horrible. It's, it's horrible. It is. Uh, they, yeah. Japan is the best, bro, With food-wise. It's not the best. Uh, yeah, I like Hawaii, though. I like Hawaii. But the thing but, is, when you use the bathroom, did it have the buttons on the toilet? It did. 
It did, but I didn't know what to do with them, bro. <laughs> so I, I had to go. I had to go with the the paper. Oh yo yo. Yeah, I just, I just, I just could, I, I just can't, I can't. Bro, my first experience with a Japanese toilet. That's what I'll never forget. <laughs> with that being said, <laughs> dude, what was it like coming back home, Moose? Um, yeah, come back. <laughs> coming back home. You know, it's a bittersweet moment. Yeah. You know, um. The good part was coming back to my own ground, being able to come back to my hometown, you know, seeing my friends, seeing my family. That was a good part. But like I said, you know, about Japan, it's my home away from home. Nothing will ever beat that. But coming home, it was, uh, to be honest, it was like coming to a different place again, in a way, because I've, you know, the first part of my adult life, it was in Japan. That's right. Yeah, you went right right, right after, after graduation. graduation, bro. You're a different. You're a different person at that point when you yeah. come back home. Different mindset, different everything. I felt I felt like a Japanese coming to Hawaii. For real? Yeah. Was, what happened? Everybody, like? everybody looking at me like Konichiwa, <laughs> telling me stuff like that. But yeah, coming home, it was cool but sad at the same time. So what was the sad part? The sad part was leaving my uncle behind. Oh yeah, cause just him up there. Him, his son, and his son wife. Son and his wife. Yeah, yeah. Yep, that was the sad part leaving oh, him man. behind. So the day I left Japan, um, one of my uh, uncle's good friends, his wife took me to the airport. So as we're pulling out, well, your uncle didn't take you. No, he was he was in that that stage where. You know, I could sense that he he was feeling some type of way. Mm. So we pull out of the driveway, <clears throat> and here I am. I something told me to just look back and just look at the house. Something in me just told me to look back. So I wrote on the window. As we take that turn, I look back, and I just see him in the window. And, you know, all I could think about was, man, I'm leaving him behind. Um, in, in that moment, I was like, damn. Because I already knew that he was feeling stuff away about me leaving. Just sad or? Just sad, you know. All over the place in his mind. Mm. That's why when I looked back and I seen him in that window, I was like, damn, man, I'm going to miss that guy. I still miss him to this day. Mm. Like, when I was up there, he was like my dad. And coming home, it was like I was leaving my dad all over again. So, but, you know, thank God for the strength that he gives me. Each and every day I wake up. Mm. Thank, thank the man upstairs for just keeping him safe up there. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> you ever talked to your uncle since then? He actually came down <coughs> this past uh, July. So that was the last time I seen him. But every, now, every, every once in a while, talk stories with him. Yeah. Just, you know, crack jokes. What was it like seeing him again? Oh, man. You do not understand... Like the level of joy that that I had. So in that video where, you know, people from the families from the military come back home from, from for a certain amount of time and like the kids are so happy to see mm -hmm. that I was that kid. To see him again was like 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 I said, seeing my dad all over again. Because mm -hmm. he was like a dad to me. He still is. And seeing him I was like, bro, there he is. Like Hey, and a lot of memories just kept rolling back, just kept coming back, kept coming back, coming back. All the, all the times we just you know spent together, it was a happy moment seeing him again. Mm. And then um, I'll never forget. It. Yeah, yeah, man, because he been up there for years <clears throat> now. Same thing like me, bro. He went when after his graduation. Yeah. 
he went after his graduation and, you know, he did his thing. He's still out there. Yeah, yeah. Still out there doing his thing. Yeah. And he probably still, there's still a desire to, you know, give kids opportunities out here, I'm sure. Waiting for the right one. <laughs> Believe it or not, this hasn't broken out yet. My brother's up there. For real? My youngest brother. Wow. I mean, I know we're on your podcast, but no one knows. The association don't even know yet. Oh, for real? He's training. Dang. We got to cut that out? Uh, <laughs> it's up to you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. But, but no, no, so your brother's up there. My brother's up wow, there. Wow, he just graduated. He just graduated. Same like me, bro. Bro, so you were able to talk him through that? What did you, you tell him? So... He didn't know what he wanted to do. Okay. Because uh, unlike my my brother that's right under me, he loves school. Like, he's a straight-A student. My youngest brother, he's the opposite. He doesn't like school. He doesn't like studying, none of that. So in his mind, he was just going to work. So when it came time for him to graduate, like... uh. Same same time around me, like around Christmas time, his senior year, he just came out and he, he he started to talk to me about sumo. And he was like, "Oh, how is it? How's the lifestyle? Is it hard?" So you know, I wasn't, I wasn't gonna sugarcoat anything that I said to him. I wanted to make sure that he knew what he was gonna go to if he does choose. And then he just went quiet for about a couple of weeks, and he came out and he told my parents, "I'm gonna go sumo." Wow. So, what they say? Were they excited for him? Oh, yeah. My mom, especially. Because her brother, too, yeah? Yeah. It's like it's like me going all over again. Yeah. Bro, you walk so he could run, Us. So. You walk so he could <clears throat> run. He's That's awesome, right man. So is that why your uncle came in July? Part of the reason? He came to grab him. Like wow. how he came and grabbed me. Bro, what did that feel like for you watching your brother go, bro? So... It was sad seeing him go, but it was like the it's like someone pressed the replay button. Yeah, just watching him walk off from Mongo. And it was <sighs> it was cool. So now See, I'm tearing up thinking about it, bro. So, that's crazy. A full circle moment. Full circle, bro. Bro, that's wild. Full circle. God so, knows what he's doing, dude. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. So now, you know, there's another local boy. Trying to make it out there as well now. Hey, that we can support them. Fuck. Let's go. So, and we gotta push that kind of stuff out, man. That's awesome. And uh, the happy thing is that local boy is my younger brother. So right. it's cool. That's awesome, bro. Wish nothing but the best for that guy. Yeah, man. Wow. That's that's awesome, bro. So, what time is it? Eleven. He's just getting up for practice. Dang, bro. Oh, boy. Yep. Oh, boy. He's in it, bro. (laughs) He's in it. He's in it. Oh, man. I have have a question. Like, how do you get paid in it? Like, with sumo, though. So. With just sponsorships? Is that what it is? Sponsorships. And after every tournament, you get your paycheck. Oh, okay. So, um, and it'll, it'll all depend on the ranks that you have. The higher ranks get paid big. The, the real low ranks is only like, it's a hard life, bro. For real. The real low ranks is only like $700 a month. Wow. That's how much. So it's a grind, right? It's a grind, bro. It's a lifestyle. Yeah, it's a lifestyle. Yep. Wow. It is a lifestyle. Start from the bottom and you just work your way up. Is there any a, 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 any point where you can start a family while doing that? <clears throat> so once you make the real high ranks. You can. You can. Wow. But once you're, if you don't make the high ranks and you're still at the bottom, you have to live in the house. Yeah. You have to cater. And remember how I told you that the first couple of months was brutal? Those first couple of months was because I was at the bottom. I had to be that one to cater. Dang. I had to wash my the, the older guys. I had to wash their clothes. I had to get their belts ready. I had to clean the bathrooms, clean the toilets. Like basically be a butler, a servant, Dang. rather than a wrestler. So... Pretty soon, I'm pretty sure my brother's going to go through that same process as well. But 
I know he got the willpower. Yeah. To just push through. Yeah. And he got your example too. I'm sure that's helpful. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Sometimes he he calls, you know, he asks, Oh how like how do I do this? How do I do that? Yeah. So it's it's, it's fun talking to him. Yeah. About that right there. Yeah. So yeah. So what'd you do when you got home, man? Like what what'd you what'd you what'd you what'd you get into, man? So when I first came back home, the first thing that I told myself was I wanted to get a Japanese job. Because I speak the language. Do you speak Samoan too? A little. Wow, you're trilingual. Dang. So, but like I see one of your episodes just talking about how you get clowned on for not speaking Samoan. Bro, I know how you feel. Yeah. Especially my brother. My brother's more fluent than me in Samoan. Oh, for real? Your younger brothers? You're the oldest. I'm the oldest. Okay, so, dang. The second oldest. Yeah. He's he's pretty fluent in Samoan. And bro, when I like sometimes I'm not I'm not that fluent in Samoan and I'll admit it. And I'm I'm not ashamed of it. Sometimes he clowns. <laughs> yeah. He clowns, bro. Yeah. And I'm like, oh yeah? Sweet Japanese. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, let What's me the use. GDP of Japan for yeah, bro. <laughs> Say your alphabet's in Japanese, bro. <laughs> but uh yeah, I uh I speak a little bit of Samoan. Mm-hmm. I can understand it fluently. Yeah. And Tongan? You speak Tongan? No. You're Tongan? Okay. So my family, we was raised on, on our Samoan side. Mm, okay. Because uh, my my papa, he passed away the year I was born. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh. So, Rosilla, but, you know, I never I never fall astray from my Tongan side. Yeah. But we were just raised on our Samoan side. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So you got a Japanese job? Yes, sir. Let's go. When I first, like I said, when I first came back, I had my mind set on grabbing a Japanese job just so that I can keep the language. That's the main thing. That's the wanted. main thing. Okay. I didn't want to lose the language because I knew that Japanese is a big part of the tourism in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, it, there's a lot of good jobs that has to do with Japanese speaking. So I'm like, hey, I got it. So why don't I, you know, grab a job that has it? And then I applied to Aulani, you know, because that was a, like when I first came back, that's a big thing. Like Aulani was it. Oh, yeah, it was Aulani it. was the thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I applied at a Japanese translating job in Aulani. I didn't get it. I actually, like I said, I actually applied at Aulani for six different times in six different departments. That's disrespectful. Like, that's disrespectful. <laughs> no, no. Or not, the very first time I applied, I actually went to an interview that they required me to have a Japanese speaking test. Oh, bro. so you spoke Japanese there? Yeah. And, bro, they were giving so much good feedback. Like, wow, your Japanese is so fluent. Like, wow, we didn't know you could speak this. Da, 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 da. I'm like, oh, I got it. I, you know, I'm going to get it. I never got it. Dang. And then after that, after those six times I got denied from Aulani, I was like, oh, you know what? Maybe the hotel business isn't for me. So that's when I started working at the Why Not Intermediate. So I worked there, and then from there, I got into coaching, football. So I was co- I was I worked there for two years. I started I uh, coached for a full year. Like I was the, uh, they offered me the head coach position, at the intermediate, and I was coaching, 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 and then one of my good friends from church, he works at the Marriott in Waikiki, and then like uh like we talked about before. He actually called me and told me, hey, bro, there's, there's a Japanese job in the Marriott. And I'm like, bro, really? I just applied for Aulani six and times. And you was done with that. I was like, ah, maybe it's not for me. And he, he was just like, bro, just try it. I was like, okay, I'll try it. And then applied. I got a phone call for an interview. A week later, after that, I was like, yeah, they're probably not going to hire me too. Two weeks later, I get a call that they want me as an in-person interview. To come to the hotel. So I go over there, talking to the supervisor and the manager. And then all they were doing was just nodding their head. Like, mm, 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 like that. You know, like like when, when you're talking to someone that you want you, you want it to just be over with. Like, mm, yeah. I'm yeah. nodding my head, but I want you to be <laughs> My bad. I know how you feel. <laughs> I'm like. And yeah, so that happened. And I was like, man. Now they're really not going to like me because they just met me in person. 
I get the job a week later. That's crazy. I'm like, wait, is this happening? And it all comes full circle like we talked about with the man upstairs having a plan. Right now, bro, this is the happiest I've been with a job ever since I was in sumo. For real? I am loving this job like to the fullest. Yeah. And I'm having fun with it. And which which Marriott you at? The one in Kotolina. So close, close by home, bro. Close no need drive, home, no bro. need drive to Waikiki. Yep. Ten bucks in the gas tank. Yes, I'm good. sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Bro, ten that's bucks awesome, in the gas man. tank. I'm good, bro. Yeah. I mean, and you enjoy interacting with the 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 people. Yeah. Yeah. Because in Japan, we would have to interact a lot with people. Mm-hmm. So that's where I really grew the love of you know customer service and stuff like that. You know, making sure people's day is really is is, is going good. And like being a, as a sumo wrestler, sometimes we go to places and people aren't happy. And just by them looking at us and interacting with us, it makes their day. Like being a, like that that little scenario right there, that's that's the best feeling that that someone can have. The fact that you made someone's day that much better. Just by you being present, mm-hmm. that's that's a goal for the that that's a win for the day. So that really carried on when I started at the Marriott. Like there's been situations at the Marriott where I've had clients come in, and um, I look at them and they're like, "Eh, I sure don't want to be here." But then I start interacting with them, and then I talk a little bit with them, and then you know, did boom, a smile comes up. And before they leave, you know, they a lot of the times they'll, they'll come shake my hand. Oh, thank you for talking. You know, we 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 really love you here, stuff like that. So that really makes me feel good about myself. Yeah, that I can do that mm-hmm. to where I can make someone smile. And yeah, make someone's day. Bro, like how many? Like it's cool because, like God, it, it's it's funny the opportunities that God gives you because you didn't know what you were gonna do when you came back. But you learned Japanese while you were up there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And like how many other Samoans out there that are just in Hawaii able to speak Japanese like that with people, you know? Right now the only I'm sure there's some, but right now the only Samoans that I know that can speak Japanese is my uncle Musashimaru and Konishiki. Yeah. Other than that, I don't know any other Samoans. Hey, Konishiki, that's right. Yeah, he's from Waianae too, right? Not a coolie. Not a coolie. Okay. Yep. Oh, that's different. <laughs> That's Golden past Miley, that's why. That's, yeah, that's the kind. That's past Miley. That's past uh, Miley Deli. Bro, yeah, so Konishiki. Do you guys ever interact with that family? Because uh, you guys family, are kind of like, you guys kind of peas in a pod a little bit. Family, not so much. Okay. Uh, we don't really know family, but Konishiki himself, he used to come train train me a lot in Japan. For real? Yeah, so him wow. and my uncle, they're really good friends. Wait, so Konishiki is up there now? Yeah, he lives up there. I didn't know that. So he lives in the, so that sumo town, mm-hmm. in Goku. He lives in that area. Okay. So him and my uncle, they're they're really close friends. Wow, oh. can you imagine living in Japan one day? Me? Yeah, I always think about it. For real? Like I've talked about it with my girlfriend. Dang. Oh, yeah, I, I would live in Japan. I'd move there. Yeah. And she's like, no. <laughs> yes. She's like, it's uh, it's too scary. Just visit it. Oh, yeah, it's just, not Japan is not scary. Yeah, so that that's that's what yeah. I keep telling her. Well. Like, come on, man. But you're alone. You're you're away from family, though. That's the thing. That's the only thing. That's the only thing. Yeah. That you're away from. family. I, I feel like I could live anywhere if my family was there. Oh yeah, most definitely. Like you know, like if 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 uh, my family wasn't in Hawaii, well, for me it's different. I, you know, I love my church out here. You know that we that we that I pastor. So I wouldn't leave. I would never leave my church right now. <laughs> but my family, like, you know, apart from the church, if my I could live anywhere, my if my family my family is there. Family is yeah. everything. Yeah. My family moved to... Well, actually... It would be hard to live in some places in the world. If, if my family moved out there, I'd be like, good luck. Good luck to you guys. <laughs> man. But yeah, so, man, it's cool. Like, right now, I, I always see on uh, online, though, you're involved in... You, you guys really involved with your church, huh? Oh, yeah, bro. Our church... So, one of uh, our elder pastors, he just... He, he retired a few years back. And then the new pastor that we got, um, he's he's really involved in in spreading the word and really using different platforms to spread the word. Mm. When I say platforms, I mean 
like activities with the youth, um, services, different stuff like that. Um, he really makes sure that the youth, his whole thing is fellowship. Fellowship is greater than raising money, is greater than, you know, the number of people that, that, that come. Mm -hmm. Um, our, the, our pastor, he's, he's still young, like mid thirties. So, um, ever since he came down, like things have been just picking up, picking up, picking up, picking up, but for the better, that's, that's the cool thing about it. Yeah. And you, you were raised in that church? Oh yeah. Uh, I think ever since, I think it was my grandma. Oh, my, uh, sorry, not my grandma. My great grandma, my great grandpa. Wow. So we've been up there. Our family has been involved in that church for a very long time. Yeah. And it's awesome. Yeah. You can't beat the word of God. Bro, how did, how was that for you? Because I know, I know now you're really involved in the church. Mm -hmm. Ever since you came home, um, I'll, bro, you're cooking. You guys are cooking, doing activities. Yeah, bro. Pese, all of that. Everything. Everything, bro, you guys are doing as yep. a family. That's I love that because, my, bro, my family, they they drive to Kailua. They drive right past my church. You know, so I, 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 and for good reason, they go, they go to their church in Kailua. But I always love seeing families serving together in the church. Mm-hmm. I love seeing families, like, together. I, you know, I, I love seeing that. And um, the seeing your family, you guys are always serving together. Mm-hmm. But what was it like for you, that that other part, following God, <clears throat> leaving, going to Japan, where your regiment is not, you know, you're away from your, not only your family, but your church as well. Mm. Like, how was that for your, your own walk with God, you know? So this conversation as well brings me back to my parents. Before I left, you know, um, there's one thing that my dad and my mom really pressed me on. Always take your Bible. Take your Bible with you to Japan. No matter what, always have the Bible. <coughs> always remember that the man of stairs is always with you. So when I was up in Japan, like Sundays, we would practice. And I'm like, damn, we, we, we just practice on Sundays? And I'm over there talking with my uncle, and he's like, yeah, we got practice on Sundays. <coughs> okay. But it really um, strengthened my relationship with the man upstairs, mainly because I was away from the church so long. And being away from the church so long, and like nowadays, our church, we do um, live videos. <coughs> so even if I work on Sundays... Like, I always tell people, in my office, I just, you know, watch the videos, watch the live. But when I was up there, didn't have no live. So I really had to, you know, break myself down and, you know, come down to it to where, like, hey, I'm on my own now. Mm-hmm. But I'm not on my own. Yeah. <coughs> it really strengthened my belief in the man upstairs to where I can always have that thought that, um, he's never, he's never away. He's always there. So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I for me it was similar when I went to college. Um, I drink this coke because my throat spiced. <sighs> I I see spice. Um, but yeah, for me it's same thing. Like I was telling, um, I was I was on here on another another um, time. I was talking to one of my friends and telling them like, bro, when I went away for college. The way my dad raised me, you know, how some people they go wild, like they just like <clears throat> they go to college. They just it's like they never even was raised in a church, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for me, I was just like buck wild. It's just buck wild, you know. And you know, a kid's gonna be an idiot and go buck wild anyway sometimes. <laughs> but one of the things that my parents just instilled in me was like the importance of my faith in God mm-hmm. and the importance of God. And so I never really saw church as like something I was forced to do. I always saw church as something I get to do and. Mm-hmm. You know, so when I went away, like, man, it was easy for me to get plugged in. It was easy for me to, like, stay focused on my word, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, my dad my dad told me, like, right before he they left me in Tennessee was, um, 
know, Tennessee. know who you are and who you serve. Not the real Tennessee, bro. Not that. Oh. No, no, no. Sorry. Let's not get into it. It's just actually four hours away from that Tennessee. <laughs> bro, in a little Tennessee. Okay. So the good, the, yes. the good Tennessee. Yes, yes, yes. Um, the part of Tennessee that nobody really goes to. Um, and I was, um, so he told me, you know, just know who you are, know who you serve. You know, you serve God. And so I feel like that helped me a lot. And not to say I didn't go do my own stupid things and did it, but there was always a, there was always this love for the church and love for God's people, you know? And then when I came home, I just wanted to get involved in the church. That's how I ended up a pastor, you know? I just love the word. I love the word. I love fellowship, you know? So and, that uh, same goal is that like, <clears throat> you never know you love something until you're far away from it. Yeah, until it's gone. Yeah. And you don't appreciate it sometimes, you know? Yeah. And so for me, like, man, I appreciate my family. I appreciate my church. Fast, I appreciate bro. my people. I appreciate my culture. I appreciate, now that I don't have it, 7-Eleven from Japan. Oh, the best egg sandwich, bro. No crust. No crust, bro. No crust, bro. No crust, no sogginess, straight fluffy. Oh, bro. Like air. Bro, I mean, it's crazy. Who is making that egg sandwich, man? I could sleep on that egg sandwich. Bro. <sighs> That's I'd, good. I'd, I'd probably eat it, but I don't uh, yeah, I could eat that egg sandwich, <laughs> man. Yeah, so that 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 to me, man, is is a cool thing to hear from your story, bro. That God's got you, and that um, that He's using the gifts of learning the language yeah. over here now. So, bro, don't move to Japan, yeah, it was. No, 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 no. I still got a lot. Don't to do, do it. I still got a lot to do. Don't do it. I like cigars. I like I like cigars. Mm -hmm. My dad has a cigar channel, by the way, everybody. Um, I like I like having a cigar once in a while. Um, actually, every Sunday um, at night after hey. everything's done, I like having a cigar. Unwind. Um, yep. But the best cigar lounge I've ever been to was in Japan, bro. You see, now that part, you know more than me because I've never been to it. I know you've never been. I don't know if it's called Whiskey Library or something like that. I walked in there. And the lady just hands me like this warm towel, like, you look like you had a long day. I was like, I did have a long day. Just, bro, just the best environment. It was crazy. I went there with some of my uh, some of my friends. It was it was pretty, I was like, man, they just do everything well here. And you know what? That little lounge area, like I've been to lounges in Hawaii. That lounge was clean. And you know what? It was quiet. Bro, that's the one thing about It was still Japan, quiet. Like, you could talk and have a conversation. Yeah. Like, there's a bunch of people. In Hawaii, bro, that would be like scraps or- Oh, guarantee. Oh, what? People would be mounted off. Bro, it was just everybody at the table could talk to the person across to them. It was quiet. It was chill. It was relaxed. In Hawaii, you're probably going to sit in a lounge and be like, oh, you're the kind son, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I know your mom. It was nuts, bro. Oh, you're the kind cousin, sisters, uncles, brothers, sister, yeah? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Japan, yeah. bro, it's- that's good. Top notch. Did so, your your girlfriend she ever been there? No. She oh, never. Change your life. We plan a trip. We're you guys planning. got a trip plan? We're, well, we're planning on going. Dang, that's sick. At the end of this year. Yeah. So I told her, yeah, I told her, yeah, check out Disneyland. I told her, because I've been to the one in uh, Florida. And I was like, eh, maybe Disneyland is not so cool. But I went to the, the one in uh, Tokyo when I was there. Bro. Talk Unreal. about the atmosphere of Disney. Really? Like I just want to just marry M Minnie. Marry I know that sounds weird, but sorry. Not like that, but you just the Not love. Like it's the yeah, love. It's the, it's the, the love. love. It's the love. But yeah, bro, like Tokyo Disneyland, bro. Just you ever did those Mario Kart, bro? Would it be disrespectful for a sumo wrestler to be riding in those Mario um, Kart tours? I can't fit. Oh, I never even thought about that. <laughs> I never even thought about that. They don't got one for y'all. No, nah, bro. Hey. That I can't fit. I don't think Mario was 6'4", 320, <laughs> bro. <laughs> I saw those. I was like, bro, that would be dope, bro, to be I, in there. Like, sometimes when we'd be going around the the, the the city, we would see them going. I was just looking at them. I was like, must be nice to be skinny. <laughs> bro, that's how I feel when I'm on the on the, on the the train. I was like, <laughs> must be them, nice, like, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm never gonna ride one of those. <laughs> yeah, bro, that's how I feel, bro. <laughs> dude, that's how I feel about surfing, dude. Bro, bro. In order for me to surf, I like one of my boys. Uh, 
he worked for one of the surf companies and he was like, bro, you should surf. And he gave me his board. And I'm like, bro, I was just sinking, bro. Like I couldn't. And he was like, ah, you need a bigger board. And I said, for real? I was like, bro, anything bigger than what I got right now? Bro, they got big boards? They got big, big boards. But bro, here's the thing. Any bigger than what I had, which Home was people. fat and no, it might as well be a canoe. <laughs> <laughs> So I might as well go canoe. I might as well just sit down on this board. Like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Let me call Home Depot real fast. Yeah, was, I'm at the blaze. I'm never going to surf and I'm okay. God's got me. God's got you, bro. I would surf in the new heavens and the new earth, but there's no ocean over there. So that's, that's what, what like, it says. When, no everyone, like when people ask me, oh, you go swimming? No, I go floating. <laughs> no, you swim, Moose. I'm able to float. <laughs> Able to float, just move my arms. <laughs> yeah, I'm swimming, but I'm floating. Oh, bro, dude, yeah. you like you, man? You guys live deep in Makaha, though, yeah? Literally the last stop on the map. Bro. That's crazy. I'm like, so our house is like, uh, it's like a five minute walk from Makaha Beach, Makaha Surfing Beach. Yeah, that's how far we live. Hey, man, all you the like, way to the end. You like it out there? Oh yeah, I love it. Hey, nothing will ever beat my hometown. Yeah, I mean. I'm pretty sure there's other, you know. My pop, was, my pop was pretty good, bro. I I lived in both. I lived in both. Oh, bro. My pop well, I, I never lived in Makaha, but I lived in Miley. Miley. That's all good, bro. Yeah, that's Wainai. That's Wainai. That's Wainai. I, I, I lived in Wainai, Wainai East. And, um, <laughs> bro, Wainai East, East side of Wainai. There you go. And, uh, but I moved to Waipau. I like them both, bro. I like Waipau. It's just not, like, it's, it's funny because I go out, you know, because my, my wife's family, they live out. Macaw, mm-hmm. but they live in that neighborhood across you guys. You know the one like it's Oceanside of the road. Oh, okay. So that little small neighborhood, Mo'o Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so they live out there, and uh, I always tell myself when I'm out there, like, bro, I can't, I can't imagine living out here if I never have to drive to town, bro. That's the thing. That's why working in Coalino. You know? That's what I'm saying. It's clutch. Clutch. Like, I see people spend like. Close to three hundred dollars on gas alone. Yeah, and time though. And I'm here just spending like twenty bucks here and there just to get yeah. home and go back. I'm like, yeah, and the time, bro. You don't need oh, waste yeah. out there, you know. But bro, so I can see myself living out there if it wasn't for the the drive. The drive. Yeah, because right now, like, we're like five minutes away from my church, so mm-hmm. way easier. But if, if you was to live in my car, well, yeah, it's another hour. It's another hour, you know what I'm saying? Another hour uh, dodging, uh, you know, projectiles as well right now, currently as it stands. Uh, uh, not, I wouldn't say projectiles. I'd say maybe missiles. <laughs> missiles bro, yeah. whatever, that, whatever that is, you got to dodge yeah. out this dangerous. Make sure you get there. bulletproof windows. It is crazy out there, dog. It is unreal. It's unreal. I don't remember it like that at all, bro. I think everybody training to be 007. <laughs> yeah, now. 007 out there, bro. Like, bro, this is what I said. I saw, I saw a podcast with somebody that said that. He was like, I ain't gangster. <laughs> I don't want none. That's how I feel, bro. I don't want none. These young cats, bro, it's just crazy out there. No, like, me too, I'm like, too old, bro. I'm too old. To, like, like, me personally, I, I I don't consider myself anywhere near a gangster. Yeah. Like, to me, what, what gangster means to me, you're providing. Yeah. You're doing your own thing. Yeah. What they're doing out there, bro. Yeah. I mean, playing too much Grand Theft Auto. Bro, yeah, I was talking, I, I was actually, uh, there was a guy one time, I remember, like, Bro, at the park, wanted to fight with me at my son's flag football game. Dude, I just said, he was like, what's up? I was like, nothing, bro. I just, we're at a flag football game. I was like, it look a touchdown. I'm 33 <laughs> and you look 42. <laughs> this is not for us, bro. You do not. And, and you know what happened, bro? I said, hello. And he thought I said something else. I said, what's up, man? What's up, dude? Oh, he meant like, well. Like he thought I was like saying something. Sizing bro. him up? Yeah, I was like, I was literally just saying, what's up, Oos? Because, you know, we got the same, we look like we got the same shirt on or something, you know? And then he probably thought you were from Kalihi. <laughs> I probably thought. I was like, no, I'm not. I'm not. You got to tell him you're from Wainai. <laughs> from Wainai. Nothing but love, bro. Oh, bro. Dog. Yeah, I grew up out there. I like it. But oh, man, dude, it's, it's it's pretty cool, dude. Sharing your story, I appreciate you coming on. Hey, anytime, man. Yeah, man. What you got going on the rest of the day? Uh, you're off out today. Off, but uh, so our family, we clean the church tomorrow. Oh, you guys clean it every week or no rotation? Rotation. So our family's tomorrow, but I work. So I told mom and dad I can go up there 
Uh, later on to the end, clean the outside. All right, bro, you got to help me out, bro. We've been trying to, you know, our church, we're kind of new. Mm -hmm. We've been trying to figure out how to get people to do be a cleaning rotation. We still don't got a cleaning rotation, bro. We got a few guys that clean, and that's it. So the our church. The you guys we, got a lot of families? Uh, that have been there a long time, I mean? Like families that are, like, really committed? Well, like, when you say, well, yeah, committed, yeah, but, like, um. So what we the way we split up the rotations is we split it up east and west. So for for this certain like for for example for 6 months. 6 months the east side families rotate. For real? And then Where's six, east side? Where's east side considered? Um anything past Nanakuli? Anything past Nanakuli. Wow. Cuz we got a couple families out there on the west side. And on the east side, there's a we have a handful of families. Wow! So a certain amount of time, the east side families clean, and a certain amount of time, the west side families clean. So I guess within this time, the west side families are cleaning. So we have tomorrow. Yeah. So that's yeah, that's how we break it up. That way, everyone can have you know, break and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, six months though. I believe it was six months, or however long it takes for yeah. the families to rotate. Oh, they rotate through. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. So I guess once they rotate through, then. Oh, that's pretty sick. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome, man. And then how you guys feel? Like, are you guys, um, wh how you feel about the, just the direction the church is heading? You talked about that new pastor and stuff. And To be honest, yep. like me personally, I believe it's heading in the right direction. Mainly because this new pastor that we have with us, he's, like I said, he's really gearing towards the youth. And a lot of the youth nowadays, especially with the Samoan churches, mm -hmm. they're not as involved as we was when we was younger. Because for sure. They're losing the youth, for sure. Yeah. Like, when we were younger, uh, when we would go to church, we would listen. Sometimes, most of the times, we wouldn't understand, but at least we would get the concept of going to church. Like, what is it for? Um, what's the meaning of the man upstairs? You know, stuff like that. <clears throat> like sometimes a lot of the time nowadays the youth they're just losing that that conception of church of they're losing the meaning of it the importance is, of it and yeah all the importance of it and that's that, that that that's really why I love this pastor so much and um not just because well I'm related to the pastor but not just because I'm related to him it's just because I see the way he's moving mm -hmm. I see the way he's shifting around and, you know, really interacting with the, the youth. Mm -hmm. That's why I said, nowadays our services, our pastor, he does his service in bilingual so that he can capture the attention of the youth. Because mm -hmm. ultimately, you know, the youth is what's going to lead the church in the future. Yeah. If you can't get the youth, if you can't get that fellowship from the youth, then... I wouldn't say you lost the battle, but you lost a piece, mm -hmm. a big piece of the church. Yeah. So right now, man, it's 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 moving in ways that it will benefit the youth mainly yeah. because it will help them understand the word of God and really have them understand what their purpose in life is. Coming from the pastor, mm -hmm. like they can understand and connect in their own ways. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think that's beautiful. So one of the <clears throat> one of the things I'm reckon I, I see, and. Uh, yeah, I'm 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 a young pastor too, uh, too relatively speaking. Um, from, but I think I think that's a good thing that you that your pastor is like that because, I understand the tension for Samoan churches. I understand the tension. You don't want to lose the culture. You don't want to lose the language, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. However, the priority should always be the the souls of these of the people, mm -hmm. right? And so, if you got a lot of young people who don't understand the language, someone is you don't 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 see it as you having to give up your culture, right? Mm -hmm. But let the gospel be most primary to you. Let oh, the, yeah. let the gospel be the most important thing to you, and the communication of the gospel. So, example. And if the kids aren't speaking Samoan, but the parents, they understand English and all that, and the kids understand English, then it's fine. Like, I, I get it. You don't want to compromise, but compromise for the sake of the gospel. Mm -hmm. And then, but on the back end, you know, 
help the kids to understand, have classes for the language and the yep. culture and things like that. But on the on the but but don't forget that the most important thing that we do as as ministers of the gospel, the most important thing we do as a church, right? Like in is is communicate the gospel, right? Mm -hmm. That's what um Paul in in First Timothy three, right? He says um he he's, you know Timothy's a young pastor, mm -hmm. a young pastor too, and Paul tells Timothy, I'm I'm writing these things to you, so in case I delay, in case I take too long to get to you, that you may know how to behave in the household of God, mm -hmm. right? The household of God, which is the church of God, right? And the pillar, and he calls it the pillar and buttress of the truth. So the pillar of the truth, the one that holds up the truth, that the main job of the family of God, the church of God, is to uphold the truth. Mm -hmm. And we can't uphold the truth if we're communicating in a language that they don't understand. Not saying that you stop speaking some more. Not, not that. What I'm saying is make certain, make uh, concessions to communicate it. So if you if you're if the if there are kids that don't speak the language, help. No, that's fine. That, yeah, that's fine. But but share the gospel with them yep. first, and then emphasize the importance of the language. You know, yeah. em emphasize the importance, but on <clears throat> on the on the back end. You know, because the most the most important thing is the gospel. And if people aren't getting saved, and if they're not meeting Jesus, if they're not repenting of their sin, right, and 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 if they're not being discipled, then you're gonna lose them anyway. And that's, that's, You're gonna lose them anyway, and so what you guys are doing is beautiful. Yeah, I don't see many churches taking that route. I don't see a lot of it. Yeah, so like, yeah, and a lot of the times too, like the old folks, especially, mm -hmm. you know how they how strict they are with the Samoan language, right, right, right. right. So that's right. that's that, that's another thing that our our pastor that we have now is mm -hmm. is real awesome because he understands what the old folks are talking about, right? Because because there is a legitimate concern. Yeah, but he also understands. The importance of the word of God yeah. and the gospel, like you said, and that's and for him to 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 meet those in the middle, yeah, it's it's really you know, yeah, something special, yeah, and it's it's something awesome at the same time, yeah, because I I get it too, like my younger sister, mm -hmm. um, she's more like she, me and her are nineteen years apart, my youngest mm -hmm. sister. And so we're she's she's very much right now. My my parents are instilling the culture in her more in the language and all that. Which I think is beautiful, you know. Um, and so I think I, I do understand that, man. It'd be it'd be great if I knew the language and knew how to speak, and I could I could reach you know our people as well. Mm -hmm. um, I do understand that, and I do understand the concern that the older folks have because our culture, when it's done right, is very beautiful. It is. Beautiful. It's very respect, you know. Yep. Like it's like Japan, right? Their culture is all, all respect as well. Yeah. Our culture is beautiful like that. It's beautiful when it's done right. And so I understand not wanting to lose that. At the same time, if we, because our culture is so, the Fasa Amor is so steeped in, connected to our faith. Yeah. If you lose your faith, then the structure of the culture gonna fall apart anyway. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I love that what you're what you're saying about what your guys' church is doing because you guys are gonna be able to make an impact on the youth and then raise up future generations. You know, we oh, can't yeah. think about, we can't just think about <clears throat> us right now. You know, and the, for the older folks in there. As well, just respectfully too. They can't. You can't just think about you right now. The long run. The long run. You know, there's generations after you. There's more. You know, yeah. there's a couple more generations after you. you gotta and think about the generations that are gonna sit in the seats that we're sitting that in. That we're now. sitting in. Yep. Yeah. And I'm sure it's gonna be the same for us. You know, when we're the older folks. Oh yeah, in the most church, definitely. And we're sitting back and going, these guys, the way they talk, so stupid, yeah, so yeah. dumb, how they do it. And so what we gotta do is remember, you know. That the most important thing that we do as well is the gospel. You know, everything that we do. That's why we, as Christians, that's why we work. That's we work so that we can advance the gospel. We, we doing this podcast, sharing our story, mm -hmm. so that people will be blessed, so that they can encounter Jesus and and um, believe the gospel. Right. And as a church, our most important thing that we do is present the gospel to these kids. You know. Yeah. So right now in our church, you know, as you know, it's Lent season. Yeah. So our church. Oh, you guys follow the church calendar? Yeah. Oh, okay. So our church, right now we're in the middle. And, um, I wouldn't say a challenge, but like different ways to show that um, or teach people about the Lent season. Yeah. So I think it was today. Today or tomorrow is our next one. It's the prayer. So we, the challenge is to, not the challenge, but the, um, how do you say? What's that word? 
The word I'm looking for. Sorry. No, you're good. Uh, <coughs> oh, the goal is to teach. That's where the goal. The goal is to teach people um, the different parts of the prayer. Um, think the being thankful, forgiveness, and blessings. So, the main the main tiers of prayer. So, um, our teams we broke up into two teams. So the teams have to say the um, the leader, the captain of the teams is writes down a prayer, and the teams read the prayer, and then um, we have the younger ones really explain um, what the prayer means and stuff like that. So, and then at the end of every um, every video that we make, we just say you know how our Lent is going or if we really stuck with our Lent and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. What'd so, you give up? <clears throat> candy. Dang. So you can't have a... Is this Connor's candy, the spice zero? Candies as in chocolate. It's hard because I'm a Reese's and Butterfinger type of guy. Oh, yes, sir. Bro, you know what you got? You're a Reese's and Butterfinger? Yeah. You know what you got to have? The Reese's Crispy Crunchy Bar, bro. I'll have that when Lent is over. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, yeah. Don't do it now. Don't do it now. I'm so sorry. Don't do that right now. But the Reese's... You ever had it? Crispy Crunchy Bar? Yeah. So so go to 7-Eleven. And then you're going to go, and it's going to say Reese's Krispy Country Bar. It's a Reese's peanut butter cup in the form of a Butterfinger. I'm so sorry that I did this to you. I'm so sorry, bro. It's okay. The man upstairs will bless <laughs> me with the strength to the overcome strength, this, strength. this trial that I have to go it's through. It's a Reese's peanut butter cup Butterfinger. Damn. They've been making it for years. So if you're like a Snickers guy, I would have said, what you need is to go to a gas station or a time supermarket or something, and they have a nutrageous bar. It's a Snickers in the. It's a recess in the form of a Snickers. Oose. I know these things, dude. I need to start going to gas stations and <laughs> just exactly. really looking in that candy aisle. Because believe it or not, bro, the first thing I go to when I go to a Seven Eleven is the hot food section. I do like the hot food. I got to. Let me tell you this. Oose. No, you're good. You're good. Let me tell you this, bro. Have you ever had? The 7 Eleven of chicken, the pork adobo. No. Unreals. I always get, so my go to is a tuna sandwich and a lap chong. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's good. But the pork adobo? The pork adobo is, is unreal, bro. 7 Eleven pork adobo, $4.99. Unreal. Is that the red, the red container bento? It's not a red container bento. No, it's a little smaller. It's the black container, so it's a little the smaller one. But it has a also crisp- one after have like four. Yeah, yeah. But okay. you just grab two for <laughs> Lent, for Lent because it's Lent. So just grab two. But bro, it's uh, the pork adobo comes with the crispy fried rice with the pork adobo, bro, and the fat is on there. It's, it's unreal. Oh, yo, I'm Filipino. I'm, I'm I'm half Filipino, half Samoan. So yo, I'm more like three quarters. I'm three quarters Samoan, uh, quarter Filipino. But so I'm Filipino. My mom, she saw more, but she raised me on Filipino food. That ch- that pork adobo was unreal. So you know your Filipino. Food. I know my Filipino. Food. My mom, my mom speaks. My mom flew in Samoa and raised Samoa and cooked Filipino. So we was confused. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's how we grew <laughs> up. Yeah, my mom made all Filipino food. And, uh, yeah, pork adobo. Pork adobo. <laughs> yeah, that's how I was, bro. <laughs> we was eating Filipino food, oh. speaking Samoa, bro. That's hey, how my mom hey, raised me. That's new. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, bro. Look, hey, look at me. Raised Samoan, raised in Waianae, love sushi. Love sushi. Well, we all, all our people love sushi. Oh, uh, so, okay. Not sushi. Beef katsu. Beef katsu. So, from, they don't have that over from here. From Japan. So, they don't have beef katsu in these 7 Eleven zoos, but anything else you need to know about 7 Eleven, I got you. Pork adobo, bro. I'm going to stop by 7 Eleven on Pork adobo, you can do that. Just don't grab the crispy, crunchy bars because when you see it, you're going to be tempted. They only have it, they only have it in king size. King size too? They they only have it in king size. No, like mid, like the no, minis. No, no, no just minis. King size, just king size, bro. It's unreal. Yo, we dog. The bet if you like Butterfinger, bro, and you like Reese's, it's gonna blow your mind, dog. It's gonna knock you out like you knocked out that other guy on the ring. You're gonna get knocked out. But don't do that because you're gonna get knocked out for messing up with your lead. Yeah, I won't do that. It's almost it's almost done. You only got three more weeks. Yeah, yeah. It's almost Easter season. So it's like 
three weeks. Bro, that's crazy that you guys follow the uh, church calendar. Most churches I know don't do that. Uh, Samoan churches. Yeah, we follow. Yeah. So, okay. And then we go. Uh, I think. Are you guys Anglican or something? Like, what are you guys? What kind of church are you guys? This um, Christian. Just another regular yeah. Christian. Non-denominational. No. Okay. So I think in, that's awesome. That you guys follow the church calendar. And when is it? Oh, the second week of no, no, not second week. The third week of March is the Holy Week. Yep. So, um, we got Palm Sunday. Yep. Then Easter season. Monday, Thursday. Monday, Thursday. Yep. You guys do all that. that. All of it. To Good Friday. Good Friday, bro. Dang. So the first year that our pastor was here, we went big. When I say big, is we had service for every single um, event. Good Friday, Easter. Yeah. Um, so you guys are always following the church calendar? Yeah. Wow. But now, like... Be- I s- before the pastor came in? Before, yeah, even before. Wow, so you guys grew up with the church rhythm. But, um, the like I said, the difference before and now is our old pastor was strictly Psalm 1 mm-hmm. style. Like, it would only be in the Psalm 1 ways. Our new pastor, he does it to where, you know, we understand it. The youth can understand it. Mm-hmm. That's 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 the only difference. Yeah, because that's 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 what makes the church calendar beautiful is when you can understand what it what is yeah. going on in the story, right? Yeah, you're reliving the story of Jesus and yeah, most definitely. Yeah, and that's the, that's the cool thing about it. that's the only difference. Yeah, he does it in a way where the youth can understand it. Yeah, but as far as how the church functions mm-hmm. with the calendar and stuff like that, it's we've been yeah. doing it for a long time. That's awesome, bro! Yeah. Wow, I'm blown away, man. God is good. I never. This is the first Samoa church that I met that follows the church calendar like that. And maybe because I'm ignorant and I've been in Palangi churches for so long, I didn't know this. But I'm like, bro, that's amazing. Your church is doing that, God and I do want to give a shout out to your your Fife Ao from before mm-hmm. because for him, hey man, the church doing this and with all these youth, that's part of your legacy too. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's part of your legacy that and the people that are there, like the impact that your church is gonna make. I know it feels like the changes are fast. I know mm-hmm. it feels like the changes is different, but for all the folks that have been in the church, look, your leg, your, the legacy that you guys leave as a church is is impacting this next generation. Oh, yeah. His legacy is still being... Yeah, that's yeah. awesome, bro. And the cool thing is our old pastor, he still comes to church. That's so... Wow. He sits in a choir. Yeah. He's serving. Still, serving. Wow. He's, he's, he's still coming. Respect to that. Respect to him, Most man. of the time, he's the first one there. Oh, yeah? Bro, where, where's your uh, the pastor that you have now? Where did where did he move from? Cali, for real, bro. I would love to meet him. So, he went to um, school in Samoa. Okay, which one? Kalanafu. Kalanafu. Okay, okay. And then he so moved five to years. Yep, he moved he to, Cali. to Cali. Believe it or not, bro, my pastor's wife, she was on Gridiron Gang. What? Yeah. So you know that end part? Yeah. At the movie. Um, where Junior runs out on the field, yeah, and it goes to the bleachers, and it has Junior's girlfriend and her son. That's my pastor's wife. What? And that's their son. Wow. So I'm like, oh, celebrity status. <laughs> Bro, I, would, to know. I, I would love to meet your pastor, man. I would love yeah, to. Yeah. I would Whenever love you to set it up and and meet him just to just to meet another Samoan just 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 serving God. You know, yep. just it would be it would be so, awesome. Um, we have a service. This Sunday, in fact, I know, I know, I know you preach. Mm-hmm. So, but we have another every first of the month, um, Fafawina service. So we do it with another church. Um, but yeah, we do performances, we do musical numbers, yeah, in the church and stuff like that. Um, you got a choir director in your church? Yeah. We was trying to do a kids choir thing, but we don't really have a choir director so <laughs> choir director is my cousin oh yeah yeah that's awesome bro i don't know if you met him or know him his last name is sapolu sapolu milo no I don't, I don't know him i know the sapolu last name because of jesse sapolu but yeah so the sap so our old um our old pastor he's a sapolu oh for real yeah wow <clears throat> but yeah our yeah, that's that's our choir director he used to be one of um one of my other church members but uh you know, she passed it down to the, yeah. the younger ones, so the younger man. ones can take over. Bro, I gotta meet your pastor, man. That's awesome. I, I'm, I'm very like that's awesome to hear. Yeah, man. Whenever, how long? How long he been down here? Uh, this is going on his th- ever since I came back. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh, so you and him, man. That's crazy. Four years. Yeah. So wow. it's, it's been nice, man. Yeah. And after this, I'll show you some videos that we used to do 
for our church and stuff mm. like that with the challenges and stuff. But yeah. God is good. God is good, man. I appreciate you, man. Thank you for coming on, Oos. Anytime, Oos. Yeah. Thank you.